Hello and welcome back to this knowledge sharing series. I'm Tarun Mahajan, a chartered accountant and more a registered valuer. I'm doing valuation of securities or financial assets across India. However, big or small, be the client in India or outside India, but it, when it comes to valuation, it interests me a lot. The purpose of this session is not to give any legal advice to anybody. The purpose is very simple to share my knowledge with all my professional colleagues. If you have a different opinion or if you want to supplement it, please feel free to connect me at tarunmahajanca at gmail.com or my WhatsApp number 9893040600. So guys, you must be aware that recently the Ministry of Finance has issued a notification dated 25th of September 2023, which is actually for amendment in rule number 11 UA sub rule 2 of the income tax rules 1962. So the existing sub rule 2 has been replaced. Let me give you the background. Existing sub rule 2 was for valuation of unquoted equity shares only in case of its allotment by any unlisted company and this valuation was required as per the provisions of section 56 subsection 2 clause 7b and that section was saying that if you are issuing securities if you are issuing shares i'm sorry at a premium and your issue price is more than the fair value, then the difference amount is taxable in your hand. But who will decide the fair value? So they said that, okay, fair value, we will tell you how to calculate under rule number 11 UA. Now, sub rule 1 is mostly for, you know, in case of transfer of shares. But sub rule 2 is actually in case of allotment of shares. And actually, the Previous, the original sub rule 2 actually it was saying that uh, there are only two methods for valuation. One is, you know, the book value method, another one is discounted cash flow method. But now they have introduced three other ways of, you know, uh, arriving at the fair value. You can take uh, merchant banker certification under the various five other methods they have prescribed, or you recently had the venture capital round or specific company round you can also take those prizes, right? But there is a question that after these amendments and even some amendment in section 56.27b by the Finance Act 2023, are the startups covered? When you read any newspaper, you repeatedly read about the startup also and they are trying to connect it with these sections. But let me tell you, startups, were exempt and will continue to remain exempt under this section and under this rule. Look at this. This is a notification by Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And it was given on 19th of February 2019, which specifically said that a startup shall be eligible for notification under clause 2 of the proviso to subclause 7b of subsection 2 of section 56 of the Income Tax Act 1961. What exactly is this provision? Look here. It says that Fifty six two seven B shall not apply in case of issue of shares by a company from a class or classes of person as may be notified by central government in this behalf. So who is exempted from fifty six two seven B? So in provision in the first provision in second point in second clause they said as may be notified by the central government. And in 2019, central government has already notified that this is not applicable to whom? 
to a company which has been recognized by DPIIT. So I can say a DPIIT registered startup is exempt from 5627B. And let me tell you, even after this amendment in Rule 11 US Sub Rule 2, and even after this small amendment in Section 5627B regarding being a resident, earlier 5627B was not applicable in case of investment by non resident, but now it is applicable even in case of investment by non residents so i am telling you that even after the amendment in section and even after the amendment in rule 11 ua sub rule 2 startups will continue to enjoy the exemption from section 56 to 7b but not all the startups are eligible the condition is the startup should be recognized by dpiit now the question is how to register your startup, how to get recognized your startup by DPIIT. Are there any conditions required to be fulfilled? And yes, there are several conditions required to be fulfilled. A DPIIT recognized startup means a startup which is not completed 10 years from the date of its incorporation. In any of the previous years, its turnover was not more than 100 crore rupees. It is found for the purpose of working towards innovation or it is capable of generating employment opportunities in the country or it is capable of generating wealth in the country. So either you are a company which is doing some innovative work or you will be able to provide employment to many people or you will be able to create huge wealth. Let me tell you practically identifying these things beforehand is really difficult. So, it is not really very difficult to get DPIIT recognition. I think around about 1 lakh, exact number maybe 5-10 thousand here and there, around about 1 lakh startups are registered with DPIIT. So, fulfilling these conditions, any of these conditions is not really difficult. One more condition is there that your new company is not formed by splitting some existing company. If you fulfill these conditions, then you can apply online on the DPIIT site and you can get recognized in few days by the DPIIT. Once you are recognized by DPIIT, you need to apply for this 56.27b exemption also and what are the eligibility criteria. You are already recognized by DPIIT. Now, your aggregate paid up share capital plus share premium. When I say share capital, it includes equity share as well as those convertible preference shares. Aggregate amount of the paid up share capital and the share premium of the startup after issue or the proposed issue of shares, if any, does not exceed 25 crore rupees. So your company has a paid up capital plus premium amount equal to or less than 25 crore rupees, not only existing, but also including your proposed issue of securities. But while counting 25 crore rupees of the amount, amount received from the non-resident investors will not be counted. Amount received from any venture capital fund or venture capital company will not be considered. Amount received from the company specified by the central government will not be considered for counting this 25 crore rupees. Now, there is a third condition also. Okay, this paid up capital condition recognized by DPIIT condition and one more condition is there. If you want to get exemption under 56.27b of the Income Tax Act, then you should not divert money. It is as simple as this. Don't make investment into residential house, non-residential house. Don't utilize money for giving loans and advances, capital contribution to other companies, shares and securities, motor vehicles exceeding 10 lakh rupees, jewelry and other investments. Unless and until that is your core business. If it is your core business, if it is used in your core business, then it's fine. But you can't simply uh, make this company an investment uh, vehicle, right? That is the condition. 
So if these conditions are fulfilled, in that case, your startup is exempt from the even amended section 56.27b and amended rule number 11 UA sub rule 2. Those startups were exempted and will continue to remain exempted. Thank you. If you have any other queries on valuation of startups, maybe under the Companies Act, I'm always ready to help all my professional colleagues. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.